Okay, so we start assembly from the motherboard. So this is the brand new Asus TUF B650 uh, M dash E Wi-Fi. Take the peel away. Ying do, ingo ying do. F is already pre-installed so CPU is already pre-installed from the tray from the shop it's a AMD 7500F so this is the Asus TUF B650M-E Wi-Fi uh, pretty good reviews on hardware unboxed okay so it's pretty good VRMs and it's pretty beefy VRM heat sinks. So the tested temps, the tested VRM temps was pretty low, even on a 7950X stress test. Wi-Fi 6 antenna, 2.5 GHz LAN. Looks pretty good. Okay, so let's install the other parts. Just from the top view. Hmm. Okay, I can see the mess here. Yep, it's recording. So let's install the what you might call it RAM as well as the SSD. So we have 32 gigabyte of 6000 megahertz. This should be CL38. So 38 RAM listed here. They do have CL. Six uh, CL30 6000 mega transfers RAM, same uh, T Force Delta, but that is another like $40 or $50 more. So, for this budget build, this kind of like mid range slash budget build is not that uh, I don't really want to spend that much. I actually need to check which ones. I need to check the manual because I need to know which slots I should install the RAM to. Hmm. To this day and age, they still give CD ROMs. So they still give CDs. For the drivers in their motherboard cases where nobody's using CDs at this point of time. Hmm. Okay, so they have it here. So that's A1, A2. So the in innermost slot is A1, B1. So in this case, on the motherboard itself will be the black ones. Okay, so let's install black sticks and we'll line them up. Mm -hmm. So we we'll open this up. The bottom slot is non flexible. Okay, 
So tap the bottom in and tap the top in. Ram speeds on the inside. So CL38 6000 megatrons first. Mm -hmm. Okay, RAM is securely in. Okay, and we have to unscrew. I think they call it this NVMe heatsink. Unscrew the NVMe heatsink. Okay, usually there is a protective tape on the thermal pad. So make sure to remove that protective tape. Oh, kind of struggling to take it out. Ah, ah, that was a struggle. Fine fingernails. Let me throw this away. Okay, so we'll install our MP44L. This is a one terabyte uh, team group NVMe SSD. It's uh, rated at 5000 megabits per second for at least download, I think. Transfer uh, 5000 megabits per second. Transfer. We'll test it. Later, I'll run through a series of tests. Oh, then you check with the customer whether they want Windows 10 or Windows 11 installed. Okay, so we will install it here. So, for most motherboards nowadays, the modern motherboards have this catch here which is uh, really convenient to secure your NVMe SSD. So we'll just push it down and there should be a catch. So the catch secures it. Yep, so you turn in the catch and it secures it this way. So it doesn't pop up. Then we'll install the so called the heatsink back. Screw it back on. doesn't have to be too tight as long as it's somewhat secure we should have good contact with the thermal pad and we can start installing our fan or our CPU cooler okay for the CPU cooler we have the PLS Assassin 120 SE or special edition so they say so let's move this side open this up so we have the two 120 fans we have the mounting screws followed by instruction manual and the most important component of a cooler, the heatsink. Okay, so let's wrap the heatsink. Comes with the heatsink. 
casing comes with protective film at the bottom we will remove it later okay so we did put this box aside Then need to check the manual to see for AM5 for the installation brackets to use. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we need this, the AM4 AM5 bracket. We need the fan clips. And we need the AM5 standoffs. Mm, and probably AM4 AM5 screws. Okay, so for AM4 AM5, there's instructions here. But basically, we want to remove the existing brackets and install the thermorite specific brackets. Okay, I've done this before. I do have a Frost Spirit 140 and I have installed a, a Phantom Spirit Evo 120. So I installed two Thermorite heatsink so far. So more or less am somewhat familiar with the process. So before I forget, let's remove the peel from here. Peel banana, peel peel banana. Satisfying. Okay, so accessories or installation brackets. These are all the AM5 Okay, it's nicely labeled To so this AM5 screws as well as AM4 AM5 screws Spaces So we have the mounting equipment and I think we that's all we need for the AM4, AM5 stuff. The rest of it, we'll put it back into the box. Put them away. Okay, so let's configure the cooler first. We need the fans. Uh, both are the same thickness, so it doesn't matter which one goes in front or behind. So this is the input, this is the intake, this is the exhaust. So intake and exhaust. So for this particular layout, we, I believe uh, the board should be sitting this side up, so the intake should come in here, exhaust should go out here. 
So in this case, the heatsink as you can see is symmetrical. So it doesn't matter which side goes in front or behind, you can flip it around and it's the same. So let's install the fans with the fan bracket. It's easier to do it one by one. Okay, so we're gonna line them up here. Okay, line them up here, and then pull up the cable. Pull up on the fan retention bracket, and then secure them at the sides here. Same for this side. Yep, personally, I like my fans to be just jutting out a little bit. Just personal preference, you could have it flush closer to the bottom, but I have a question now. If I install this, I have no access to the screws here, so I actually need to take out the center fan and only install the center fan after I've screwed down the heatsink. So let's install the front fans and we'll leave the center fan off. So the fan retention brackets go in like this. Okay, fans up. So now to install, let's put it aside. And let's put these pieces aside here. We have Let's bring the motherboard back. Make sure the screws brackets are safe here. Okay, so motherboard is back. And it's time to remove these two retention, the default AMD retention brackets. That is for the default stock AMD fan and then apply thermal paste and tie down the thermal right specific retention brackets so using a screwdriver just gotta untop them okay personally I have a mechanical I have an electronic screwdriver for this
Okay, so this one will keep it back into the case. Put it back into the box where we unbox the motherboard and we need to apply thermal paste on the 7500F okay for thermal paste we'll be using the max store paste uh, this is rated for 11 watts per um, 11 watts slash metric kelvin or something like that meter kelvin I've tested it on GPUs it is a pretty good paste pretty decent paste thermal conductivity is quite nice so looks like this we don't need that much, I believe, just a bit. Okay, it's all covered. Okay, so now to put in the M5 spaces and I will double check I believe it goes this way let's check it out yeah so based on the instructions the arch is on the inside so it's facing towards the CPU the archy part, the bend part here is facing towards the CPU. Okay, then we need to screw it down. So hand tighten it for a few rounds to make it secure before I use my motorized screwdriver to do the rest Secure, we use a manual screwdriver and give it a, just a bit of torque. Just that hand tighten, not too much. Make sure it's secure. Okay, so now we can install this one. Uh, so the fans actually, there has this fan splitter connected. So just with the connect the fan splitters like this. The fan port is way up here, so we have air pump, CPU fan and CPU OPT, so there's three right here, top one says AIO pump, and then there's CPU fan and CPU OPT, 
doesn't really show because it's covered by the ram sticks but it's the grey one okay so I'll just install this plug it into the grey header in advance okay now I can screw the heatsink on hmm Looks like the RAM is going to provide interference. Ah, RAM is a bit on the tall side. So, how do you know the RAM is going to provide interference? Is this? If we just lower down to this level, you will see that it interferes, right? It's not sitting properly here because the ram sticks up a little bit too high so the solution is to move the fan further up so that it doesn't interfere with the ram sticks hmm. okay so heat sink has to go in first goes in, gives it a few turns, make sure it catches on to the screw threads, then caught on, and we could use a motorized one to The motor screwdriver is not that strong. So, better use hand, use a manual screwdriver and slowly provide some torque to them. So, I'm, I'm, well, while I'm tightening these two screws, I should do it in a cross pattern. Notice I tighten the top a few rounds and go to the bottom a few rounds, go to the top a few rounds and repeat the process. So this just cross the this technique is just called cross tightening. It helps to ensure that we have an even mounting on the even mounting on the co plate to the CPU. I do remember I did remove the plastic tape over the couplet earlier so you can see it's installed now the fans have to go on it okay mm -hmm. Hmm. the fan should go this way uh, there's a bit of excess cable here So the first fan is in. Now let's connect the second fan. Should go in like this. So I'll connect the second fan into the fan splitter cables and rearrange the fan so that it more or less lines up with the first fan. Keep pull back on the fan retention bracket bias and with a nice secure fit okay so both fans are spinning there's some cable here I'll probably just do a bit of cable tying probably get some cable tie give it a moment
Hey, look what we have here. So, custom cable extensions. Bought them a while back to be used in the new build. Yep, so just gonna look for a short cable tie wire, something like this. And maybe tie this cable up a bit. Just turn it around. Mm -hmm. Give it a simple tie, and then maybe what I can do is tuck these below the heatsink so that it's not too ugly, it doesn't dangle out, so it looks nice and neat. Okay, so you can barely notice it, but it's under the heatsinks, there's no extra excess cable hanging out, nice and neat. Okay, now, ideally we should test this out first before we put it into the case. So let's test it with the power supply that we purchased. It's a Cooler Master MWE 750 Watt. Okay, so power supply was already opened. Wrapper was pre-cut. Okay, so we'll unwrap it. Uh, maybe we'll put this aside again. Okay, let's put this aside. This is good. Power supply, pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not recommended to share cables. Recommended to have each individual cable into each PCIe socket of the GPU. Which is a mistake I made in the past with my 3080 ended up with a burnt cable receptacle but the 3080 was functioning fine fortunately Power supply, and we need the standard cables that is the power supply fastening screws and its cables.
Okay, let me pause the recording for a while. Okay, so guess let's get the necessary power cables and uh, we need at least the 24 pin and the CPU power pins PCIe ones we can connect later but we need to power and see whether the motherboard CPU boots up so 24 pin here this is the CPU power it's labeled here Okay, the rest I will keep it for now. Put it aside. Okay, plugs in nicely and there are labels here for 24 pin as well as CPU power uh, it's all shared PCI or CPU power this one it's the if I'm not wrong it's the new NVIDIA plug the NVIDIA 12 the 12 pin power plug I didn't, I'm surprised that it includes that it's PCIe 3.0 already. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh, it's not. It's actually 18. Oh, it's not for the NVIDIA plug. So it's unique. So it has 18 pins here. Okay. And it has the 10 pin on top. So 18 plus 10, it's 28 pin power. But here it's 24. So 28 goes into 24. Interesting. And let's have the CPU power as well. Okay, so this side it goes into here. I could plug in any of these here. And this one goes in the CPU. So let's maybe put this here. And let's bring our motherboard in and show you where we connect them. First, okay, you can see CPU power goes into here so that's an 8 pin here normally this additional 4 pins is not necessary unless you are running some extreme overclocking and your power supply provides those cables so normally the 8 pin here is enough so that goes into this and the 24 pin goes into here it's a bit of a stretch maybe I'll bring up the power supply here and it goes into the front a bit of a push oh. yeah it's a bit of a hard push oh. 
Okay, I think it's secure. There's still a bit of a gap, but it should be secure. Uh. Okay, next up, we will have to power this on and connect them to a monitor to test this output. Okay, so give me a while while I bring the monitor. Okay, so I've connected the monitor to the HDMI port on the motherboard. So now I need to connect a mouse and keyboard. Mouse and keyboard connected. Now, which switches will provide power? That is a that's a question I want to ask myself. Just to refer to the motherboard manual. So I need to know which pins provide power, which pins H D D V, which pins are the H hard disk indicator lights, and so on and so forth. P O D power button. So as you can see here, the power button is these two right right here so these two pins third and fourth pin from the top left okay so I'll just short the third and fourth pins with a small screwdriver or something like a plier And I have even plugged in this power cable. Okay. Lights. Okay. So the fan spin. As you can see here the fans are spinning. Uh no light on the power supply but RAM is lighted up. So the RAM lights up. And we're waiting for an image. Sometimes it does take some memory training time. Yeah, looks like there's no image. So maybe let me shut it down. Yeah, so if I have F might not have onboard graphics. Which is why it's slightly cheaper. Now I will need to attach the PCI cables to it. So just attach a 3070, but I do need to power it. CPU CMPSU CPU But this is CPU as well, right? Isn't this CPU? Yeah, I say CPU PC, not PCIe, so this 
Ok, so I have one PCIe2 Yep This always be a tough one. Hmm. Yeah, it's really very hard to take up the GPU now. I will need my screwdriver to push it down. Yeah, the thing I really dislike about this Zotac GPU is how deep the power cables are. Makes it pain to install the power cables. I don't know why they do did this. Assuming it's for aesthetics, but they just make it a pain for people to plug in and out. So both are connected. Now I'm gonna plug this in. Should I use the MR cables plug in here? Okay. So I'm gonna power on the PSU. Short the third and fourth pins. Nope. Not power on yet. Okay, fans are spinning. As you can see. So let's see if we have image. Seems like no image. Might be applying pressure on the RAM sticks.
error is this DRAM yeah I think the RAM sticks are kind of screwed up so maybe I will zoom into here let's see whether we can take a look at the RAM sticks here okay if we take a look at the RAM sticks hmm the issue is that mm. Turn over here. So if we take a look at the RAM sticks here. It actually looks like the RAM sticks are a little bit pushed away because the fan is kind of pushing it out of position. So let me reseat everything. Okay, so we reseated the RAM, that means I took out the front fan here and I took out the RAM sticks, put them back in. So we're gonna switch on the PSU, switch on the power, and let's test it out again. So we're gonna go and short the third and fourth pins over here. Okay, you can see fans are running. RAM is lighting up. GPU, CPU fans are spinning. Okay, so let's see if this gives us an image. Oh, probably gonna leave it for a few minutes see whether it resolves the issue if not I will try seating the RAM at another slot Okay, so I uh, muted myself earlier, so, so I switch, switched it off because it didn't boot and I read on the manual that the recommended memory configuration for uh, two slots, two pieces of DDR5 RAM is actually the A2, B2 which is the grey ones. So, okay, so that's A1, A2, so the in, innermost slot is A1, B1, so I'm gonna take the RAM out. Okay, slot in on the grey. To B2, which is the ones further away.
which allows a little bit better memory clearance if I do say so okay it's got the GPU back uh, my grab with air coolers is that it's so troublesome to uninstall the GPU because there's that GPU catch okay let's power everything on again test okay it lights up but the issue is it still shows that light there so that light is actually DRAM yeah uh, it's orange red and the light goes off goes into white and we have boots yeah we have boot so uh, correct to this Y to reset FTPM if you have bit locker system uh-huh press N okay so works zoom out a little bit So it runs. Uh -huh. So as you can see here, 70. Let me zoom in a little bit. And we have the Tough Gaming B650 ME Wi Fi 7500F6 core. And 32 gigabytes. Now it's 4800. So let's see whether we can enable XMP. Let's go advanced mode 7 and probably a tweaker memory uh, DRAM timing can go memory presets hmm. Ooh, there's Hynix and Samsung. Oh, pretty cool. There's a few different memory presets. Um, favorites. C7. Where is. Okay, memory frequency. Oh, we have 6000 here. Ah, we have Expo 1, Expo Tweet. So, what is Expo 1? DDR5, 6000. Expo 2. Oh, Expo 1 is of a slightly lower voltage. So the core, CPU core and CPU SOC voltage is actually less. Expo 1. I go Expo 2, CPU core voltage is slightly higher. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, maybe it's auto anyway. 
Let's export tweet. Thousand DRAM VDD Okay, let's try Expo. Save changes and reset. Uh huh. So Expo One is six thousand TCL thirty eight. Yeah. So CL thirty eight. Okay. Let's see if this boots. Might need some memory training time. Okay, while we wait for the memory to train. Oh, it boots. Nice. And you can see it in the memory part here. Oh, Six thousand. I also have an issue with the benchmarks. So, if I go to the screen here, so among the benchmarks, when I tested the SSD, it is way slower than I expected. Uh, I take a photo here. Yeah, the read and writes are so slow. Okay, so I encountered an issue with when I was testing the SSD. So I didn't have, I didn't record the part whereby I was putting the build into the case. But after I placed it into the case, I was actually testing the SSD speeds I installed. So I installed all the chipset drivers, the AMD chipset drivers, the Wi Fi, as well as the uh, only network drivers. Because uh, before I installed the network drivers and everything, actually the network didn't work. Like uh, the Wi-Fi wasn't working, the LAN wasn't working. So I thought there was a hardware issue until I installed all the chipset drivers and then the Wi-Fi started to work uh, and so on. But anyway, after that, then I tested the NVMe speed. So uh, take note that this is a... Let me bring up the website. So... The uh, SSD that we got in there in the first slot was a Team Group MP44L Gen 4 SSD. So if you look at the specs, we had the one terabyte one, which is rated for 5,000 megabytes per second read and 4,500 per second, uh, 4,500 megabytes per second write. But if you look at the speed, this was a screenshot of the speed that I tested with. Uh, you can see this is the uh, this is HWD info. 
And this is the reading, like this is the code name of that SSD that I got in there. Uh, brand new, so remaining life is 100%, but you can see that the read was only rated at 1,800 megabytes per second, and the write was 1,600. So it was really slow. So I thought it was really weird because it was a brand new motherboard. So I went and Googled for like slow SSD speeds and I got a variety of results. So it does seem like uh, there are people who have had this issue before. Um, this is, okay, no, this was the download speed. Uh, so this was the same motherboard. Uh, they have issues with the speed and the processor was quite similar, the 7600X. Yeah, if we read more, then you can see that, yeah, so here this sequential read and write was higher than mine, but still slower than the rated speed, right, of probably, like, if it's a Gen 4, it's at least 5,000 to 7,000 read, and it says that it runs at Gen 4 two lanes, um, but why, so people are saying that, does it, is it in the top slot, and it says it's definitely in the top slot, and when he reached out to ASUS support, they couldn't provide any explanation, they simply asked him to use slot 2. So this is kind of weird. That means ASUS support actually knew of the hardware issue. That means there was issues with the first slot and they just asked the customer to use the second slot and they actually didn't offer any like software. Like they didn't ask the customer to like install the latest drivers. They didn't ask the customer to you no know, do any of the software related stuff. Instead, it's just you no know, go around the problem of using the first slot and use the second slot, which is kind of disappointing because on the B650M-E Wi-5, the first slot is actually rated at Gen 5 speeds. So if imagine if you bought a Gen 5 SSD and you can't use it on the first slot, you definitely cannot use it on the second slot because second slot is just rated for Gen 4. So you're not getting the full speed of the Gen 5. So that means in this kind of scenario, if you, you know if it's a hardware issue, that means you got to RMA the whole motherboard and get a new one and hope that the new one's top slot actually works at the rated Gen 5 speeds. Uh, this is both the same thread and this one, this is another thread that I found. Um, it's actually running on the Asus, but it's the Intel chipset, right? The i7 6700K. Uh, also mentioned there is low speeds. This was a little bit of a much older thread from two thousand from four years ago. Um, it says issue hits only one thousand eight hundred speeds. Then yeah, so they were saying speeds not supposed to. So this is a similar issue on another Asus motherboard, but it's a different chipset, it's an Intel chipset. And I googled more and I found this thread. This is from one year ago. Uh, on the Asus B650E-F. So there's a different motherboard using a similar processor, 7600X, because my ours is the 7500F, which is uh, technically a 7600, but without the integrated graphics. So here it says that, let's see about half, 3500, and it is not running at the full speed, which is 7000. So, it actually has screenshots to support. So it's saying here, this first screenshot is Gen 5 NVMe PCIe 4.5, but it's running at two lanes. So its connection is at Gen 4 two lanes. Wow, if he put it on the second slot, that means M2.2, .2, which is a second NVMe slot, it is running at Gen 4 four lanes. So he put this in green. So hence, there is a difference in the speeds, like, uh, yeah. So the first slot is running at Gen 4 X2, and the second slot is running at Gen 4 X4. So we notice a difference between speed, the, like the PCIe lanes on the first slot as well, as compared to the second slot, which is probably why ISU support told the other customer to use a second slot instead. Um, so take note that this is a different motherboard than ours because our motherboard is the B6, it's, it's tough gaming B650M-EY5, but this, this user had the issue on the B650E-F and it's not the M, it's the full ATX motherboard. So it's a totally different motherboard. 
So in summary, there are people are asking any solution and all that. But uh, yeah, there were a couple of users saying that they have similar issues with uh, this is another user of the 650E-F and this is uh, B660G that means he's using the Intel chipset so it's an Intel uh, 12700 and he still has a similar issue so this seems to be a Asus problem a Asus motherboard problem that is spread across both the Intel chipsets and the AMD chipsets it could be the like the chip that they use for controlling the SSD speeds. So maybe the, it's the same chip for every one of their motherboards and it has a similar issue. Because I definitely don't have this issue when I use Gigabyte motherboards or no, I've used Gigabyte, I've used Astrock, I've used uh, B450s from MSI and so on. Never had this issue. So first time I'm using an Asus motherboard for a customer's build and I encountered uh, this issue. So anyway, I did uh, what was suggested in one of the threads and I plugged the, so this was the slower speed, right? So I plugged the, mother, the SSD into another slot, the second slot, because there has two slots on this uh, MATX motherboard and the second slot, it ran fine. So same, uh, same SSD, uh, now it's running at 5,000 megabytes per second read and 4,500 4, per second uh, per uh, per mega uh, 4,500 megabyte per second write and the customer was okay I checked with uh, him or her whether it was okay for me to use the second slot uh, she said it was okay and we proceeded with it so I just left it on the second slot and yeah because the only other solution would probably be the RMA the home motherboard so this was another test, yep, then it's running fine. So yeah, it's an issue on Asus motherboards, but it seems to be random because we don't get like a lot of people complaining about Asus motherboards. So yeah, seems to be an isolated case. So there was a third issue after resolving the first two. Um, the first two issues was the Wi-Fi. Actually, the Wi-Fi did not work when I initially booted up everything. It was only until I installed and I found, like I used a sort of like a USB a Wi-Fi adapter to plug into the USB port, which uh, enabled me to connect to the internet. And after I connected the internet, I updated the Windows drivers. I downloaded the AMD networking chipset drivers. And it was after installing the chipset drivers that I could use the like Wi-Fi, the default Wi-Fi antenna, which was built into the motherboard. Um, before installing the chipset drivers, it simply like didn't work. So uh, I almost thought that the Wi-Fi was like uh, damaged on arrival, and I wanted to like RMA the whole board. But thankfully, the installation of the networking drivers actually um, resolved that. And it was the first time I encountered such an issue because with any of the other motherboards I've built, uh, previous systems, which is like more than 10 systems, um, I've never had a board which came without you no know, Wi-Fi being enabled by default. Like uh, it was the only board whereby like when I unboxed it and I installed the CPU, the Wi-Fi didn't work until I installed chipset drivers. So it was a very weird uh, issue. It was pretty hard to troubleshoot, uh, but I finally managed to get it to work. The second issue was the slower NVMe speeds, which I finally resolved it. But the third issue, as you can see here, is the RGB fans. So the RGB fans are not working uh, as expected. Uh, you can see me tinkering around with the RGB fan cables and the fan hub. Um, the middle RGB fan worked fine. The top RGB fan worked intermittently as well as the bottom one. So uh, I actually flipped it around and I tried to like uh, like tinker with the, with the cables putting in and out, changing the, the different ports on the RGB hub, which uh, I mean the RGB hub came with the Shakun T5KM case, which was good. So I thought it was an issue with the RGB hub. I disconnected the cables uh, of the the, the fans which had issues as in the RGB cables and then I plugged it direct to the RGB headers on the motherboard but it didn't really resolve the issue it improved it a little bit um, but uh, I finally concluded that the problem was with the RGB cables of the fans itself because if I bend the cables at certain positions the RGB tends to work and once I uh, let go of like 
my fingers and the fence reverted back to its original position the rgb doesn't work so uh it was a it was it was it was a headache for me so yeah so that's that Okay, so here you see me installing the uh, Asus Armory Crate software, which is the default software for, uh, which is the, the current software that Asus uses for their motherboards. It controls the RGB and controls other stuff. I think like uh, maybe like fan speeds as well as, I think maybe even overclocking profiles. Uh, but I didn't use it for the fan speed or overclocking profile. I simply used it for the RGB so yeah so i just installed it and then used it to tweak the rgb profiles to see whether it, whether if it's a software issue Okay, so you can see me here uh, playing around with the different settings on the software. Yep, you can enable like the yeah, you can enable RGB on the on the RAMs and stuff. And I have it activated, uh, set it to a single color, and as you can see here, the RGB fan still did not work. I set it to blue, it worked, but only the middle fan worked in this case. So right here, I flipped the fan around, I flipped the case around and you can see me tinkering with the RGB cables here. So I actually disconnected the like, RGB cables from the fan hub and plugged them direct into the RGB headers on the motherboard. And it does seem to resolve the issue somewhat, uh, as you can see later. So actually it does uh, kind of light up. But uh, there were still issues with the back fan. As you can see in the back fan here, like uh, it's not showing full blue, even though I set the armory crate to display blue for all the fans. But the fan at the back is showing like green and blue. So there were some LED, the L, like I concluded that there were some LEDs which are faulty on the rear fan. And um, for the top fan and the the top front fan and the bottom front fan, it was actually the RGB cables that had issues. So if you actually install them in you no know, certain uh, angle angles on the motherboard, they will work. But uh, like uh, it seems to work here in this video. But in later tests, in later tests where I like move the cable a little bit off, and then the lights on the fan will go off. So yeah, so here I'm like just doing boot tests and so on. As you can see, yeah, the, the the color just appears intermittently. So there wasn't really like a, a solution for this. My only solution was to you know, bring the whole case back to Simlim. I bought it from Dynacore and to RMA the whole case and ask them for a replacement for a new case. Um, yeah, you can see like the RGB works for a little bit. Like I tweak the cables a bit and then the top fan works. But uh, if I were to like ask them to change the whole case, then uh, I have to dismantle everything, which is a lot of work. And then the cost of the taxi to bring the case back, which might not be like really worth it. So that's a huge cost involved. And then what if they give me the new case and I encounter the same issues with the fans, 
because in this case it seems to be the an issue with the quality of the the, the RGB cables that uh, of the fans that came with the case. So an issue of quality, which yeah, so there was no guarantee. So alternatively, um, I did message the the customer that alternatively we could actually buy new fans. So I saw like there were like I think exactly the same fans. Um, like in this. They are very cheap fans here, but this I believe are only fixed colored ring light fans because I wanted to get the same ring light effect. Uh, this had like RGB, but I don't know whether it comes with addressable RGB or is it like a fixed pattern. Um, but the fans look yeah decently nice. It looked really similar to the fans I had on the Shakun T five KM. Um, like this look really nice. It doesn't seem to be that expensive. But I didn't know whether they were addressable RGB fans. So the other alternative was uh, to like look at this. So there was this, which cost like $5.74 per fan. So I can buy three of them for around like $16. Or you can buy three in one plus the RGB controller and so on and so forth. So there are alternatives like so I asked the customer like whether she wants you know, the fans replaced because I could order them for AliExpress and replace them for her. Uh, I didn't really you know the shipping is actually really expensive. So like this, at least the shipping is cheaper. So I didn't really want, you know, I was going to do it out of my own pocket, but the customer just uh, asked what was the delivery time, which since it's from AliExpress, I expected like at least two to three weeks delivery time for the new fans. And the customer just said, nah, just forget it. So she's okay with you know, the current fans being a little bit faulty, but the fans were still working. There was still airflow, just that the RGB didn't work as expected. In the pictures here, which shows the completed build with uh, the side panel installed. So the PO I left it to the customer to remove it. So it shows that it's booting. So as you can see, the case here looks really nice with the RGB, especially uh, when you see the shot later from the front. So I really like the Shakun T5KM case. I really like the design of the grill. Just unfortunately, the fans didn't work well. If they worked well, it would have been perfect. So that's all for this build. And we'll see you guys in the next build vlog.